<laughs> Presenting now, Leslie Howard and his little daughter, Miss Leslie Ruth Howard, who is 10 years old. Mr. Howard and his daughter were with us six weeks ago. I think it is safe to say that no single performance since our variety series began has occasioned the volume of letters and telegrams of appreciation that followed their appearance then. Tonight, for the benefit of those of you who may have missed the first time and those who have requested a second hearing, we repeat the same scene from Sir James M. Barry's fantasy, Dear Brutus. Leslie Howard and Leslie Ruth Howard in The Enchanted Forest from Dear Brutus. Mr. Howard will introduce the scene himself. Mr. Howard. Three things, they say, come not back to men or women. The spoken word, the past life, and the neglected opportunity. There is no second chance. Each road we take each choice we make is done and done forever. But suppose you could turn back the clock. Suppose there were a land of the second chance, an enchanted forest it might have been, a timeless place where the things you should have done are real. A land of the second chance. Can you imagine what that would be like? Go a step further then in imagination with Sir James Barry and with me. Suppose I'm a, a man named Will Durst, an artist, a fashionable portrait painter. I'm in the middle years, and somewhere back in those years, I took a wrong turning. I've become cynical in a rather shallow fashion, dissolute, not quite a drunkard. My work has no sincerity in it, and I know it. My wife hates me. I despise her. I have no children. And once back there, I, I did want a child. How different things might have been, I think, if I had had that child. I'm standing now before a door that le leads from my house to the garden. I walk through the door. Suddenly I'm in a moonlit forest, a clearing drenched with moonlight. The house is gone, but I've forgotten there was a house. I'm sitting before an easel painting. And standing beside me in the moonlight is a little girl. I don't know now in the forest that this is my daughter that might have been. I only know this is my daughter. The moon is rather pale tonight, isn't she? <laughs> it comes of keeping late hours. I can't sleep when the moon is the full. She keeps calling to me to get up. Perhaps I'm her daughter, too. <laughs> you look it tonight, you know. Do I? And can't you paint me into the picture as well as my mother? You could call it the mother and daughter. Or, or simply two ladies. If the moon thinks that calling me her daughter would make her seem too old. Oh, Matre Pulcra, Philia Pulcrio. That means, oh moon, more beautiful than any Tutney Hapney daughter. Daddy, do you really prefer her? She's not a patch on you. It's just the sort of thing we have to say to our sitters to keep them in a good humor. Margaret, what's this? It's a tear. I should think it is a tear. That boy at the farm did it. He kept calling snubs after me. But I got him down and kicked him in the stomach. He's rather a jolly boy. Yeah, he sounds it. Gee, God, what a night. And what a moon. Dad, she's not quite so fine as you've painted her. Shh, I, I've touched her up. It's too lovely, Daddy. I won't be able to keep hold of it. What is? The world, everything. And you, Daddy, most of all. Things that are too beautiful can't last. Now, how on earth did you find that out? I don't know. Daddy, am I sometimes stranger than other people's daughters? Well, more of a madcap, perhaps. Do you think I'm sometimes too full of gladness? Well, my darling, you do sometimes run over with it. To be very gay, dear dear, is so near to being very sad. How did you find that out, child? I don't know. There's something in me that's afraid. Daddy, what is a might have been? A might have been? They're ghosts, Margaret. I dare say I might have been a great swell of a painter instead of this, this uncommonly happy nobody. Or again, I might have been just a worthless, idle waster of a fellow. You? <laughs> well, who knows? Some little kink in me might have set me off on the wrong road. And that poor soul I might so easily have been might have had no Margaret. My word, I, I'm sorry for him. So am I. Poor old daddy wandering about the world without me. Yes, and there are other might have been. Lovely ones, but intangible. 
shades, Margaret, made of sad folks' thoughts. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not a shade. How awful it would be, Daddy, to wake up and find one wasn't alive. <laughs> yes, wouldn't it be, eh? <laughs> Daddy, wouldn't it be awful? <laughs> I think men need daughters. Yes, oh, they do, yes. Especially artists. Oh, especially artists. Especially artists. Yeah, especially artists. Fame is not everything. Fame is rot. Daughters are the thing. Daughters are the thing. Daughters are the thing. I wonder if sons would be even nicer. No, oh, no, not a patch on daughters. You see, the awful thing about a son is that never, never, at least from the day he goes to school, can you tell him that you rather like him. By the time he's ten, you can't even take him on your knee. No, sons are not worth having, Margaret. Signed, W. Dirt. But if you were a mother, Dad, I dare say he would let you do it. You think so? I mean, when no one was looking. Oh. Sons are not so bad. Signed, M. Dirt. <laughs> but I'm glad you prefer daughters. At what age are we nicest, Daddy? Well, now, that's a poser. I think you were nicest when you were two and knew your alphabet up to G, but fell over at H. No, 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 no. I think you were best when you were half past three or just before you struck six. Or possibly in the mumps year, when I asked you in the early morning how you were and you said solemnly, I, I haven't tried yet. Did I? Yes, such was your answer. But I'm not sure that chickenpox doesn't beat the louse. Oh, no, no, I'm all wrong. The nicest time in a father's life is the year before she puts up her hair. I suppose that is a splendid time. Hmm. But there's a nicer year coming to you. Daddy, there is a nicer year coming to you. Is there, darling? Daddy, the year she does put up her hair. Puts it up forever? You know, I'm afraid that when the day for that comes, I shan't be able to stand it. My, it'll be too exciting, my poor heart, Margaret. No, no, it'll be lucky, you. For it isn't to be a bit like that. I'm going to be a girl one day and a woman the next for the first year. You'll never know which I am to look at my hair. And even then you won't know. For if it's down, I shall put it up. If it's up, I shall put it down. And so my daddy will gradually get used to the idea. I see. You, you've been thinking it out. I've been doing more than that. Oh, yes. Shut your eyes, Dad, and I shall give you a glimpse into the future. No, I, I don't know that I want that. The present is so good. Shut your eyes, please. No, Margaret. Please, Daddy. No. All right. All right. They're shut. Don't open them till I tell you. What finger am I holding up? The, uh, the, uh, the dirty one. Daddy! Now I'm putting up my hair. I've got such a darling of a mirror. It's such a darling mirror I've got, Dad. Dad, don't look. I shall tell you about it. It's a little pool of water. I wish we could take it home and hang it up. Of course, the moment my hair is up, there'll be other changes also. For instance, I shall talk quite differently. <laughs> well, where, where are my matches, dear? Top pocket waistcoat. You were meaning to frighten me just now. No, I'm just preparing it. You see, darling, I can't call you Dad when my hair is up. I think I shall call you Parent. Hmm, what? Well. Parents, dear, do you remember the days when your Margaret was a snip of a girl and sat on your knee? How foolish we were, parents, in those distant days. Oh, shut up, Margaret. <laughs> now I must be more distant to you, more like a boy who could not sit on your knee anymore. Now, 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 look here. I, I want to go on painting. Can I look now? I'm not quite sure that I want you to. Make such a difference. Perhaps you won't know me. Even the pool is looking a little scared. Well, now look. Well... What do you think? Will I do? Stand still, dear, and let me look my fill. The Margaret that is to be. Do you see me often enough, Daddy, like this? You don't need to look your fill. You are looking as long as if this were to be the only time. Was I? Well, surely it isn't to be that. Be gay, Dad. You'll be sick of Margaret with her hair up before you're done with her. Yes, yes, I expect so. Shut up, Daddy. Daddy, I know what you're thinking of. You're thinking of what a handful she's going to be. Well, I guess she is. You think I'm pretty, don't you, Dad? Whatever other people say. No, not so bad. I know I have nice ears. You know, they're all right now, but I had to work on them for months. You don't mean to say you did my ears. Yes, rather. Well, my dimple's my own. I'm glad you think so. I, I wore out the point of my little finger over that dimple. Even my dimple? How about anything that is really mine? A bit of my nose or anything? Well, when you were a babe, you, you had a laugh that was all your own. Haven't I it now? No, it's gone. I'll tell you how it went. You see, we were fishing in a stream. That's to say, I was wading, and you were sitting on my shoulders holding the rod. We didn't catch anything. Somehow or other, I can't think how I did it, you, you irritated me, and I answered you sharply. I can't believe that. No, it sounds extraordinary, but I did. It gave you a shock, and for the moment, the world no longer seemed a safe place to you. Your faith in me had always made it safe until then. You were suddenly, suddenly not even sure of your bread and butter. And a frightened tear came to your eyes. 
Well, I, I, I was in a nice state about it, I can tell you. Silly. <laughs> But what had that to do with my laugh, Daddy? Well, you see, the laugh the children are born with lasts just so long as they have perfect faith. And to think that it was I who robbed you of yours. Oh, how you do love me, Dadless. Yes, I do, rather. You know, I never, never intend to lose you. It would be hard for me if you lost me, but it'd be worse for you. I don't know how I know that, but I do know it. What would you do without me, Daddy? Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't talk like that, dear. It's wicked, stupid, naughty. Daddy, listen. It's going to rain. Yes, I'm afraid it is. It frightens me, Daddy. Let's get out of the wood. Well, I'm afraid we won't have time, dear, before it begins to... Hello. I hadn't noticed there was a house over there. Look. Daddy, I feel sure there wasn't a house over there. Oh, silly. It's just because we didn't look. Our old way of letting the world go hang so interested in ourselves. You know, it's funny that there's something vaguely familiar about that house. Let's get out of the wood. Yes, dear, yes. But there, there's somebody I have to see in that house. I'll just go in for a moment. I'll go with you, Daddy. No, no, you better not, Margaret. They, they might not care for children. Don't go into that house, Daddy. I don't know why it is, but I'm afraid of that house. No, no, it's not. There's a kiss for each moment till I come back. I shall be back before you can count a hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't go into that house. Please, Daddy. Daddy, come back. I don't want to be a mite of bean. had to hurry off to keep his daily appointment with the petrified forest curtain, Miss Leslie Ruth Howard is still in the wings, and I'm sure all of you would like to meet our charming little leading lady in person. So I've asked her to take a curtain call before the show ends. Her father has given his permission for her to stay, and here she is. <laughs> Tell me, Leslie, of course you're going to be an actress when you grow up. Well, I'd rather not be. Really? Why is that? I don't think I'd like the life. You don't, eh? Well, if you don't want to be an actress, what would you rather be? Well, I'd rather be a lady's vet. A what? A vet. You know, an animal doctor. That's a curious ambition. Why do you want to be a lady vet? I like the country life. I like looking after animals. I've got lots in England. Horses and dogs and cats and birds and rabbits. Especially horses and dogs. You're quite a horsewoman, I understand. Well, I've ridden since I was four, and I'm ten and a half now. That makes it six and a half years. Quite a record. You're evidently, you've evidently inherited your love of horses from your father. Oh, yes. He's mad about horses. He'd much rather be on a horse than on a stage. But is he as good on, on a horse as he is on the stage? <laughs> oh, much better. Indeed. <laughs> but you can't compare the two, can you? Oh, hardly. I mean, there's nothing like a horse, is there? Not a thing in the world. <laughs> That's why I want to be a lady vet. Well, I don't blame you. But I'm sorry we're going to lose you all together as an actress. Oh, I might do it just for a hobby. Like stamp collecting. That's it. Anyway, I've got to go for, to school for about eight years or more. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> After that... After that, you may have changed your mind. Well, goodbye, Leslie. See you in about eight years or so. Goodbye, Mr. Valley, and thanks. This is the National Broadcasting Company.